Hello and welcome to another episode of the Build a Soil Tropical 10x10. Today we have episode two. It's important that we document every single thing that happens here so we can be transparent. And in the beginning, one of the number one things that we have to do when we get new plants is to inspect them for their health, make sure there's no disease or pests, and also transplant them. And so today I have a lychee tree that you can see right here that is not doing very well. We ordered it through an online store. It's pretty haggard and beat up. My main concern, it's heavy. If we don't do something about this, it's gonna be waterlogged and it's probably gonna die. So if I had to deal with this container, I'd probably put a fan blasting straight down at the soil to help dry it out and put it, the pot up on something that could breathe through from the bottom. Since I don't have to deal with it, I'm gonna get out of this wet soil and I'm gonna transplant it right back there in that big 30 gallon of our living organic soil. So that's the Build-A-Soil light recipe. It's been used already one time. We grew cover crop in it, grew another plant in our other series in it. And since we've harvested it and we've let that soil kind of rejuvenate, it's time to plant something in it. And I think that that big container would do really well for a tree. And then below it, we can start to do some intercropping of, of other food or medicinal herbs at the base. Once we're positive, the structure of the tree is growing again. So I'll do that today. A uh, couple other things since I decided to whip out the camera. Right now I don't have anybody to help me record, so I've got it on a tripod. So I'll do my best to show you what I'm doing, but I at least wanna document this. Besides the tree, which is really important, we also have the Zanzibar, which is like on its last leg. Even when I picked it up, it almost wanted to droop and snap. So it was waterlogged, it feels like it's drying out. I'm gonna get it in some fresh soil in hopes that I can help it recover. I really don't know, I've never grown one of these and it looks pretty bad. My wife indicated in the last episode it smelled a little bit, it was getting some root rot and some of the leaves were falling off, you can see. So I'm gonna do my best to save that one today since it's critical. Other critical importance, I grabbed some aloe. Now I've got plenty of this plant at home, but these pups just were produced off the side and I tossed them in water thinking I would transplant them right away and I haven't, they're getting slimy. It's imperative that I do this today. And the garden does this for all of us. It teaches you that, hey, important things have to happen. You cannot put them off a day, two or three, certainly not in the garden. And it reminds me that that's how life is. You know, there is a drop dead date for all of us. There's a part where just opportunities are closed, windows of opportunities go away, and it's better to be now o'clock in that motion, in the flow, at least once you've planned everything out, right? So it's part of the plan. We need to get this stuff done on time. So I'll be saving these aloe pups today. And then since we're gonna be busting out a little transplanting, I'm gonna see if I can get a little bit further. I've got a few other plants. This is the Rex begonia. This one could probably, you know, it's not a big plant, so it could probably stay in here. It's not an emergency. I'm probably just gonna to tend to the emergencies today. So I will set this down. And instead of me going around telling you what I'm gonna do and hoping I get to it, I'm just gonna grab some soil and I'm gonna to get to transplanting. First and foremost, I've gotta get this tree transplanted. If there's anything worthwhile, I can grab the camera and I'll show you. But I think that it just needs to get done. I wanted you to see the condition that it was in. So let me just do that to the camera. You can see this bottom branch here is just all it was like new growth and it got really weak in shipping. All the new growth at the top was just beat into the cardboard box. The old growth looks fine, but my suspicion is it's just waterlogged and if I don't fix it, it's gonna die. So let's get after it. This is pumice. We're gonna use this pumice in the cactus episode. We'll discuss that soon. I'm just gonna dig a hole in here, that's it. I wanna put it in the center and you can tell the size of the container about the size of the hole that I need to make. It may not be perfect because that soil might fall out of there as soon as I get going, but I'm gonna at least start with an ideal hole size. Moisture feels good. I'm just taking interest in that, making sure that I'm noticing, hey, is it soaking wet in the bottom? Is it bone dry? It feels like the ideal moisture all the way through. As far as checking for ideal moisture, I like to pinch the soil with my hand and see I can come a little bit closer. Let me grab some of this soil. And if I squeeze the soil with my hand really firmly, I can get some structure there. It's not just falling apart. That's the moisture level that I like. No water dripped out, but it held structure when I squeeze it. If you squeeze it and water drips out, it's probably too wet. If you squeeze it and it falls immediately apart, probably a little too dry. Depending on your soil recipe, you know, it'll have different characteristics, but with our soil, this is the way to be. I'm not an expert on trees, but given the shape and health of this one and how it's woody or stocked, I don't wanna bury the stock down. So I'm just gonna keep it at, an ex at the exact height here. When I water in, I really wanna make sure I get some root wise in here. This has some mycorrhizal fungi, it has some beneficial bacteria, and because this plant is struggling, once I'm done transplanting, I'm gonna get my watering can and I'll be sure to add some root wise to it. 
to make sure that we get it a little bit of initial moisture in here. Now I know it's overwatered here, but once I get it into its final home, it'll, it'll be able to balance that moisture again. And I wanna make sure I have just a little root wise in there. In fact, since I'm worried about watering, I'm gonna sprinkle it right in the hole. I'll be right back. This is our root wise microbe complete. If you're on a healthy farm, you'd have all this anyways. But since we're in potting soil, it makes a lot of sense to me to add all the be beneficials that we want to be there. Nature abhors a void. It's gonna fill it with what it wants. And oftentimes it's gonna be nature's cleanup crew, which may not be as good as growing plants. And so when I have soil that's not been alive with a growing plant in it, I like to inoculate it. This is root wise microbe complete. Um, there's a lot of information we can cover on this, but I'm just letting you know that I'm gonna use this. If you have a mycorrhizal inoculant on hand, when you're transplanting, I think it's a great idea to do it. Now, part of the challenge is this one's made for annual flowering plants. This is not made for the trees. And so I'm not thinking that this mycorrhizae is gonna be perfect for it. It's got a few different um, strains in here. I do have another version that is the ecto instead of the endo, and that'll probably be a little bit better. But this has so many beneficial bacteria in there, I think it's gonna keep the root system clean and the overwatering is really what I was worried about. So the trichoderma in here is really gonna help with that. I'm only gonna sprinkle about a half tablespoon around the planting hole. All right, let's get in here and let's see what we're working with. I think I'm just gonna do a little lean and pull. Let's see what happens. Let's get the angle right. So I'm dumping the soil here. Got a nice slide. See how the soil's just falling out? Oh, I don't like this soil. Okay, I can see, you can probably see from back there some of the roots that are hanging. They actually look pretty healthy. They don't seem root rotted. So I really do think that this is gonna make a big difference just by transplanting. I'm gonna take some of the soil I don't like out of here and I'm just gonna drop it in. I'll make sure that it's sitting straight before I push it down a little bit. I feel like if we're growing a fruit tree, I should have some good roots so it can produce some good fruits and that's a pretty big size, 30 gallon there. And so I'll measure the distance from the light as far as I'll use my, moist, uh, my, my PAR meter and I'll get a reading and see how intense it is. This is not fully up right now. I have it kind of dimmed down for the coffee plants and I can move those around. So when we get to one of the environmental episodes, we're gonna do a deep dive on that. We'll, we'll get readings once we've established kind of a location for the plants. We'll get a reading on them and we'll update you. In fact, we're gonna make a spreadsheet of all the plants. And we're just gonna keep adding every single plant on here and it's ideal environment. But just so you know, these are all short day plants. And so right now we're only, I believe, yeah, we're at 10 hours of light right now. Maybe it's nine. And so I'll update you more on that as we go. You can't quite see, I'll grab the camera at the end, but we do have some of the lettuce seed sprouting and some of the cover crop seed sprouting from from the first episode, so that's good to see. It does make me happier to see this in here already. So there'll be plenty of talk about mulch or companion plants, things like that, in the coming days. I'd almost like to go over there and water that, but you sh I showed you that the moisture was perfect in that soil. And I believe it was overwatered in its container. So I'm just gonna let it sit there. And then tomorrow I'll give it just a tiny bit of water and I'll probably add uh, something beneficial. Like we have the Thrive Yahweh, I might add a little bit of some Q, the saponins, which we'll discuss later as we get into products that work. The other thing I'd like to make sure during um, the instruction, as far as this tropical 10 by 10 series, you don't have to use these products. Although we're discussing build a soil products and that's what this is about, I'd like to teach you to make your own soil from scratch, make your own nutrients, make your own compost tea. And if you don't have access to some of that stuff locally, buy it from us or maybe get it from a, a shop that carries build a soil. But otherwise, a lot of this might be helpful for people in other countries where they don't have a build a soil to interact with. And this will help them get educated and learn more about the different processes, especially when it comes to the soil and the ingredients, because although we're not an expert in every type of plant, we've, come, we've become pretty proficient. We have a vegetable farm that we sell to local restaurants. My wife runs that and does a really good job. A lot more experience than I am when it comes to running the vegetable farm. We've got our cannabis 10 by 10, where I've been teaching for the last 10 years how to grow your own medicine. And so translating that into the skills that a lot of us do by nature, just by having house plants and growing food and growing herbs, I think we'll be able to share a lot with each other, especially when it comes to the soil inputs and all those amendments. So keep that in mind as we go forward. I've got a lot to do today and I really just wanted to get the emergencies done. This is our grassroots living soil pots. There's many different containers. I'm just choosing to, to use what we have here. We'll also start buying some other containers. You know, locally, it's easy to get really nice containers for your house plants, but these, these work really well and they may not be as pretty. I think they look pretty good and they hold the moisture with this BPA free liner and they still air prune out the bottom so that they drain pretty well and they won't get root rot. And then I can just put this in a tray to wick up the water or I can bottom water. So pretty neat. I've got this, it is Zanzibar Gen. I'm gonna grab a bag of soil. I've got Build-A-Soil Light. This is my go-to. 
It's very well balanced. It has very low numbers of anything problematic like sodium, chlorides, bicarbonates. Very gentle on all the plants with plenty of nutrients. So I think that this plant will do well in here for recovery. So I'm gonna fill it a little more than half full. I'm gonna add a little more soil and then I'm gonna mound it up to the side so it kind of like sits in there like a nest. You can see this is what the Build-A-Soil light looks like. Probably hard to tell in the light. It's beautiful. Pumice, no perlite, all the latest technology in living soil we use. We have our own soil mixing machine. We make it here on site from ingredients that we buy. We lab test, we heavy metal test. We're very particular. Okay, I hope this makes it. Even for the transplant, it's pretty weak. And then I'm going to just be gentle here with my hand and do a quick flip here. Kind of squeeze the pot around so I can get it to drop out. My wife was right. It is all sorts of root rotted. There's a rove beetle in there, so that's a decent sign, but I mean, it was rotting. There's like this centipede thing in there. I'm not sure if you can see that right where my thumb is. All the, rot all the roots are just rotten. I normally don't like to break the root ball up, but I kind of want to see what's going on in here. I'm just going to transplant it. We'll hope for the best. I don't think it's going to make it though. Time will tell. Worst case, I'll just use this container for something else. I should have done this the day I got the plant. We already knew it was struggling that day. And we kept on saying every other day, we'll get to it. Okay, and then what I was gonna do is, I don't want this to be in too bright a light. I'm just gonna put it over here where it's kind of shaded. And it's got a, a little bit of support from the corner of that earth box. I, I want it to be able to just lean on it since it's so weak right now. And hopefully we see a little increased turgor tomorrow. Some sign of color coming back in, but that's what sometimes happens and stuff you should look for. All right, well, let's keep going. Let's not get sad. I'm gonna grab and let's do the aloe. That's the next most important. This will be perfect size container for these aloe to grow bigger until we wanna transplant them again. Let me grab a new bag of soil. Build a soil light, my favorite recipe. It's the one we'll use again. And then you just pull this like a feed bag, unsews the top, and now it's open. Oh yeah, the moisture looks really good in this. Okay. This one I can pretty much have full because there's no transplant root ball. I like to leave a little bit of room in my container, a couple inches from the top, that way I can add more soil later, some mulch, easy, it makes it easy to water, and this will be plenty of soil here. Let's go ahead and grab this. I'm gonna peel these outer layers that were kind of rotten off, and now it looks like everything else is healthy. So that's the aloe vera, Barbadensis miller. And I will go ahead and just Put my hand straight in there and let's bury this bad boy. There we go. And since I've got another pup here, might as well plant it next to it. So we got two pups in here. I'm just gonna pack it down so that they stay up. And I hope that is much better than the water it was just sitting in. And so we'll see how those do. I'll go ahead and keep this on the bottom so it's not in too much light. While I'm at it, I've been wanting to transplant this. I think it's gonna be really pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and use build a soil light. Fill it up, but not all the way, so I have room for the transplant. Really happy with this one. This is the Neon Pothos, Golden Pothos. They got a few names for it. I like the name Neon, so. The roots look good. They're not rotten or anything, but you know, they could be better. I think it was sitting a little bit too much moisture in here just to make up for the, how big this uh, plant was. And also just because we've been wanting to transplant. So I just run in here and give them a little water thinking we'll do it tomorrow. Well, today's the day. And then I'm just gonna pour a little bit more soil in there. I just lift the leaves up, that way there's no buried leaves. Go around and fill in all the space. Pack it down around the edges. Much better. And this has got a hanger on it too. Guess I could hook this one up right now. Got a hanging basket. I'll put that one there for now. And we'll find a better spot for it soon. You know what, this one really needs a transplant. This hibiscus is not doing very well. I'd like it to be in a big container. I think I'll use this one. It's a five gallon, it's a little bit bigger. This is the one that I broke up the dead root ball in. So I'm gonna dump this stuff out. Okay, there's the last that bag of soil. One more bag of soil. Each one of these bags has about seven and a half gallons in it. About a cubic foot, depending on, you know, if you smash it down or leave it kind of fluffed up. Okay, I don't want it too full because it's got to be transplanted, but it looks like I got some new growth coming out the bottom. I just think it was too intensive light up top for how little nutrients are in here. So it's gonna do really well in our new soil bag. Go ahead and just pull this out. Oh yeah, look at those white, beautiful roots. That's what I wanna see, not all those dead rotten roots like the other transplants. So this one is for sure gonna do well. Go ahead and drop that in there. I'm gonna pull this soil tag back out until I'm done. 
put some of the soil in. This is so fun. I'm so glad we're doing the tropical 10 by 10. All these different plants in here to see. Plus the iguana is gonna be so stoked. Okay, hibiscus. And then I got the Zanzibar. Let's make sure that's labeled. Go ahead and put that right here. I wanna transplant that, but I wanna put it in something big. All I really have is this, but it's bigger than that. So that'll be a good home for it. You can always do a bigger one later, but it's colorful. So let's put it in the bright one. Put some fresh soil on the bottom. Perfect. I really like the color on this flamingo lily. Excited to transplant it and see a whole bunch of new blooms on here. See how we do getting it out. Cool, it's getting a little bit green in there. See some white roots, but some of them were just grown algae probably because it's a white container. It lets some of the light through. I can see through it a little bit. I can see the dirt inside. It's not good. That's how you get that algae, right? So clear white, you want it opaque, especially if it's like in an area where the light is bright and it can hit it. So I'm really glad we're transplanting today. A little awkward here, but whatever. Making a mess, I'll just clean it up afterwards. Oh yeah, a little press down and now it's all even. She's gonna be so much happier now. That's great. Make sure I clean up the trash. Immediately I wanna get a broom and sweep this up. I don't like to leave any debris in here. Some more transplanting for another day. But we took care of some of the most important urgent ones. This hibiscus looked really healthy, but the top growth was starting to get bleached from the bright light in here and not the constant access to nutrients down low. Pains me to have ugly plants in here, but this coffee plant is really doing a 180. Lots of new growth, even since the first episode we did only a few days ago. So I'm hoping that we get some good results there. Otherwise, that's it. This is the one from the last time we transplanted. You can see some of the leaves are opening up and looking a lot healthier. I see lots of new growth coming out on the inside. Wish I could show that to you. I'm not sure you can see on the camera. But inside there, there's just tons. I mean, there's at least 20 new little shoots coming out of the middle. That's what happens after you transplant into build a soil. I probably should do this one. Let me see. I was going to wrap it up right now, but I've seen this one. The edges are getting crispy and it's not going to make it. And I really want this one to make it. So one more. What's container? Should I do? I'll use another three gallon. I really just want to get this going. So let's get the, let's get the peonia begonia going. It's not called peonia begonia. I think it's an angel wing. You can tell by the shape, but it's from peonia has been passed around up there. And Kid Kai was so nice to give that to me. And that's part of the magic of having plants that you can share with other people and give freely. This one I can feel pretty full because it's bare root. A table to do transplanting on would be really nice. Probably be better for you guys watching on camera as well instead of me bent over the whole time. But part of life is just jumping in. You can't wait until you have it all figured out or you'll never start. So now I can just improve as we go. I expect you to do the same. Let's grab this gift. Now let's see. He has it with some rubber bands. I don't want to snap them around the stalk of the plant. So I'm going to be gentle here. I'm going to make this easy on myself. Cut the rubber band. Don't have to pull it over the gentle roots or any of the foliage. You can see that it's already rooted. And so I will just set this in really gentle so I don't rip those new roots. There we go. The peonia begonia. Thanks, Kid Kaya. Thanks, Kurt. I feel like I should just keep going. All right, I gotta leave something for my wife and I to do. We have these two, the begonia, and we also have this mandarin that needs to be transplanted. We also have this philodendron, which needs to be transplanted. And so there's more work for us to do. And even after we get transplanted, there's a lot to talk about in here. We're not even getting started yet. Can't wait to get into pest control and to talking about the plants and making your own soil and all of the additives. And we can also compare what's on the market, how to, how to research ingredients when you're buying fertilizer. This one needs some help. I want to transplant too. Okay, well, I could sit in here and talk plants all day. I really just wanted to do the emergency transplant. In the future, I plan on having a transplanting table. We're going to get some furniture in here and ways to raise these plants up so we have a lot more height than here instead of just everything on the ground. But we had to get started. And as I mentioned before, if you wait for all the lights to turn green before you go into town, you're never going to leave. So we decided to just get recording, get after it. Uh, for episode two today, we had some emergencies. The lychee plant showed up on Saturday. I'm glad I was checking the tracking. Came with a heat pack, but it was waterlogged and it was beat up. So we got it transplanted. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate the fact that people even care about this because it gives me a platform. It gives me something that I really love to do. And between my wife running the vegetable farm and me running our cannabis 10 by 10, putting both of our minds together and creating sort of a dream come true, I think is really worthwhile. I hope that some of you have the same dream that you'd like to build a tropical paradise of your own grow your own food that you can eat 
fresh with your meals every single day, grow your own medicinal herbs that you can make your own tinctures out of, your own medicine for you and your family. And of course, just breathe the fresh air from all these plants, purifying the air, and have a special stress-free zone to go to and spend time in. If you like this stuff, subscribe to the channel, like, tell your friends about it, and of course, drop some comments. Tell us the plants you'd like to see us grow. Maybe you've got a rare plant that you wanna share with us and we can trade. Maybe you've got a recommendation, like I wanna grow some lime, a um, little dwarf lime tree. We're gonna be growing coffee to, to grind our own beans. Anything that you think is worthwhile, reach out, put it in the comments here. We're gonna read them, answer back, make frequently asked questions videos, and probably take a lot of your advice as far as which plants to grow. So until next time, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next Tropical 10x10 episode.